Just who is Sprock? Where did he come from? It is a strange story that begins many years ago. Since you ask, I'll give it to you straight. All right, let's get this done. Let's get this done. Let me delete some of this stuff out of here. Delete, 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 all right, set. All right, hope you guys are doing well out there. Um, hope you guys are doing well. We got some stuff that we want to go over. Uh, oh, man, I am watching a lot of basketball. Watching a lot of basketball lately and, you know, just picking up on some things here. Just picking up on a lot of things here. And what I want you guys to do is pick up on it along with me. I've been enjoying this season. I mean, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot going on in the NBA. And it's the show that never ends. It goes on and off the court. What I've been noticing lately, uh, we got exciting basketball that's been taking place. We got teams that's been getting blown out. We got buzzer beaters. We have teams that are hella good losing their weak teams. Our teams that have should have no business. You know, we got people getting dunked on like every day, bad. Star players getting dunked on bad from Giannis to KD to all kind of players. Been dudes getting crossed up every night. Certain players are back. Like John Wall's playing good. John Wall shooting the three ball. Glad we got John Morant back. What else? Then off the court, you know, the whole thing with Brooklyn and, you know, Kyrie just go, goes up and disappears. Hopefully he's doing well. I know he's probably dealing with some, you know, some off the court, so some mental issues. But um, I'm happy that he's back and, you know, playing and stuff. But he just disappeared at one point. And then we have, you know, just the whole them trying to figure it out. What else do we have? I mean, it's so it's so much going on there. You got like like LeBron order. He, Le, LeBron's arguing with some white chick off the. <laughs> he's like arguing with some white chick on the sideline. Like, what's going on in the NBA? It's great. I love it. I love it. Everybody's calling her courtside Karen. <laughs> like this is what I from what I understand from his interview. This is what I understand. So like, basically, what happened was they was on the art. The, LeBron was on the court. And basically, her husband and LeBron was having some back and forth. And then, you know, it was just like kind of like, you know, what people do, what fans do. Just have a little chirp. Like, they chirp. If, if you've never been to an NBA game and sat close, like, they chirping. You know what I'm saying? And Like, they talking. Like, talking a lot of trash. A lot of people don't know that. They think, like, these dudes just see saints. These ain't role models out there, bro. They, they cursing and acting crazy and... Pfft. So, you know, this is having a, him and the fan uh, having an interaction. And then the wife, you know, probably, you know, had a little bit too much to drink. She she had, she was try, start popping off. And LeBron said, <laughs> the, the lady said, <laughs> the lady said, LeBron said, shut up, bitch. <laughs> I laughed so hard when I heard that. LeBron cursing at the lady. And she said, I said it back to him. So it's just, it's just like a lot of fun stuff happening in the NBA. I love it. 
I love it. it. It hasn't stopped either. Like she's still talking on it. Like if, go for, I, don't, I don't know. I've been seeing like videos of her. Uh, Dev, where's the interview you've been saying you was gonna drop like two, three years ago? Uh, much love, rocking with you since ten thousand dollars. Oh, the Kyrie thing. Yeah, that video didn't pan out because we didn't we weren't able to finish. Something happened. We weren't able to finish that, and I wasn't able to keep getting into games. And it, it, I, I had like some really dope idea. I plan on getting back to it. I ain't lost it. I know exactly where it is. So, um, but yeah, just a lot of fun stuff from the NBA. I appreciate you sending a donation through. That's love. Uh, anyways, is there anything that I left out on? I mean, Miami Heat, they go from playing in the championship in the bubble to, I, are they going to make the playoffs? <laughs> I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs this year. Uh, Jimmy Butler came back like 100 pounds lighter. Like, wh what's going on? Uh, what's up? Thanks for the uh, fire content lately, bro. Love and prayers from San Jose. AJ, appreciate you, AJ. Much love. All the way from San Jose back down to L.A. Um, let's take a look at some games here. So there was a lot that, that went down. Uh, but I'm going to go over the player of the day. In my opinion, this was the player of the day. And that's I could, it could be a lot of people to be honest with you, but I'm gonna go because it, I'm gonna go with this guy because it doesn't happen this often, and that's Malik Monk. So I'm gonna go to some of his footage. He he played a really good game, and uh, I'm gonna just go down the list here. Let's see, yeah, Malik Monk had, had himself an excellent game. Where is it, Malik? I think he had like 36. Might might have been a career high for him. Not sure. But he just went crazy from three, and I thought that was, like, really dope to see. There we go. They ended up beating the Heat, which, look, I mean, if you look, they're up 9 to 20. The Heat should have won the game. They went to overtime, but I, I, I'm going to tell you what happened in this game. So that's the first one went through. And then from that point on, he just he just lost his mind, bro. Like, let me see if I can get some more here. Uh, results, free throws, foul. Free throws. There we go. And and you know, this is somebody I've been really high on for a while because of his explosion and the way he moves, he could be really good in this league. I, I always thought that. Now, it didn't always, you know, show, but I always thought that Malik Monk had some that all the right tools, solid height, long arms. You know, he he's kind of He's got a like kind of a nasty handle too. If you if you just watch him, he kind of got like a little bit of handle. So in our first quarter, he just kind of started going off, and you know for for this whole game, I just thought he was good and he deserved it. He deserved to be the play uh, player of the day for that for that much. You know, we watched Chris Paul. We're gonna get to Chris Paul a little bit later, but um, you know, guys just picking the spots. You know, you want to go for you want to go for more points. Let's just go back and, and take a look at this. Gonna go for more points, become a shooter. Become a shooter and then learn how to do all the other stuff. You know what I mean? Like uh Monk. Oops. Why do I keep doing that? Thing about Monk is he's so athletic. And you know, his whole career was just more like a, you know, using a lot of athletic plays. But if you really watch him every now and then, you see some stuff. He got some stuff to him. Oh, I, I messed up that. I gotta I gotta go back. Free throw, foul, foul, foul. I gotta delete that. So it would be nice to see, you know, him capitalize and get a lot better and build off of what he has. Cause they got some they got some players down there. I like Graham. Rozier is good. Monk is good. Ball is good. They got some players. Um, they got kind of an exciting team that's fighting to get in the playoffs, and they just can't seem to stay above five hundred. I don't think they're above five hundred, if I'm not mistaken. A little hezzy pull right there. So that's when he started feeling it. Like, make the game easy. Get a couple easy buckets before you start trying to cook and, you know, do too much. Like him, he kind of let the game come to him before he started trying to go crazy. You think it's possible to walk on? This is a question from Muhammad. You think it's possible to walk on to a D1 in two years with no high school experience? And if yes, what would it take? I can compete at a high level. Thanks. If you want to compete at a hollow and you want to be able to walk on, you got to show that you can shoot and you got to show, like, you know, everybody always says hustle, right? I, I want to share something with you. Everybody always says hustle, 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 right? 
This is very important. Yes, you do need to be able to hustle if you're trying to walk onto a team and you need to be able to do this and that, right? But at the end of the day, can you put the ball in the basket and can you make plays for others? Those are like something that, you know, stands out. Now, defensive-wise, yeah, you might have guys that could knock down shots on your team, but if you could, you know, obviously if you could pick up full and you could be a pest to the guys that, you know, are starting over you, then you could show, okay, maybe I could put this guy out and he could be a pest. And then on top of that, he could knock down shots and, you know, he's setting up players. Don't don't go out there trying to ISO. Please don't go out there trying to ISO. You're, you're setting yourself up for failure. So, anyways, just wanted to uh, put that energy out there. Uh, little things like that. If you could just knock down shots and show that you can hit open shots without having to do a lot of work, then you're going to be fine. So, we're going to go down the list, similar style to what we did yesterday. Um... But it's making plays and stuff that I, like that that I like. That That's going to be a big problem if you're going to try to walk on to a team, you know. But if you can go on as a shooter and let that be your identity, then perfect. It's not even so much of you creating things. It's just passing. If you just think pass to the open guy, yet another play where, like, just think about what Malik Monk is doing. We've seen a couple hezzy threes, but other than that, it's just like, oh, catch and shoot. Too late. Knock down. And threes, last time, I te- last time I checked, threes count more than two. So you can go out there and try to ISO and do all this other stuff, but when that help side come and you're trying to walk on, you, you're going to look really dumb, um, you know, trying to ISO and do all this other stuff when college isn't, isn't requiring that type of stuff nowadays. The, the people aren't playing like that, you know, except like some of the star players, but you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot doing that. And this is coming from a person that loves playing one-on-one, so I'm just trying to – Help you out, but, you know, catch and shoot. N- another one, catch and shoot. Like, just think about what the NBA is, and then you could just find a way to survive. Hmm. There's a lot of stuff that we want to go over, but this is my player. To get. Catch and shoot. Catch and shoot. It's, like, easy. You don't even do that much work. Catch and shoot. See what we got going Sure, you're gonna come on. Okay, now he's kind of cooking. Go to the bucket, blow by Duncan Robinson. That's easy. And this was his role. I like get into the free throw line, you know, making stuff easy. It's not too much dancing. It was really simple and it was light out there. And you know, you gotta appreciate uh, you know, what you saw from Malik Monk today. I thought I thought he played one heck of a game. I hate guard when people do stuff like that. You know, you cut them off and they run in circles and no no dribbles, uh, coming off a handoff, knocking down the shot. You can stand out like this big time because because floor spacers will always have a spot on the floor. So Malik Monk and uh, and the Horn is going to win this game, but I want to show you why they won it in overtime though. So check this out. If you were watching the game, you already know. Like it was, it was bad. It was like the level, the level that this dude got exposed at was nuts. He got. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna let you watch it. And you say yourself, because yeah, it was bad. Player, boom, Malik Monk. Okay, and then we're gonna go apply filter. What are we looking at here? Let me just reload this. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, keep going, keep going. Results. And then we're going free throws, apply filter. And then we'll go overtime. Wait, what's going on? Let me go back to this game. I fault y'all. Let me go back over to this game. Select. Oh, that's Charlotte. And that's... Who is that? Charlotte? And... Miami. Why can't I find them? Oh, there they go. There they go. Then I'm gonna go to the fourth quarter. No, matter of fact, I'm gonna go to overtime so y'all can really see what I'm talking about. It, it was they they deliberately picked on one specific heat player throughout the whole overtime. And it was just like nothing he could do to hide from this. Apply filter, go back. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna go to results. One point, one, two, apply filter. What's going on now? I'm only getting, 
Make three. All right, so check it out. Let's see if we can get it. This is overtime. See what they go after. So this one's on Duncan Robinson. End up throwing a nice pass. They they kind of go after both him and uh, and Tyler. Where's Tyler? Okay, wa- now watch this. <laughs> watch how they're deliberately going after this dude every play. I might even throw the fouls in there too, just so y'all can really see it. Like they're literally just trying to get Tyler Hill on everybody. Bucket. And this was like, keep in mind, it was tied when it went on the overtime. So keep it, like, just pay attention to how many, like, buckets happen after this. Monte Graham this time. Oh, got Tyler Hero again. Thank you. Come, come get this bucket real quick. And you know, they were talking about holding him. I, I, all right, I'm going to just say this. They were talking about holding Tyler, keeping Tyler Hero and not giving up him for Harden or like including him in the trade for Harden. I thought that was ridiculous. Or Bill. I thought that was ridiculous. I and I think Tyler Hero's good, but not that good. Not not that good. Another play. Not Devontae Graham's gone, so he's gonna attack. You know he's gonna attack. If he's guarding him right now, he's gonna attack him. They tried. They had the double on. They sent the double because Tyler was guarding them. That's crazy. They sent a double on the. You gotta really think about this stuff. They sent a double at half court on Devontae Graham, and Avery Bradley, one of the best defenders, was one. Of them. That's crazy, bro. All no babies allowed. You the man. You've been, I've been watching for a minute now. Congratulations on your son. Keep grinding. MJT, appreciate the love. Okay, I see. Good offense. A foul. All right, here we go. Here's another one. I oh, wouldn't even see all of them. Let me see. Oh, that was the end of the game, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Where's Tyler? But anyways, you guys pretty much get the point. They just went after Tyler Hill in the whole overtime, and that was the game. Literally, that was the game right there when, once they did that. And you know what? Look out for it happening even more. Look out for it happening even more because I think, like, that was that was huge. And... and NBA teams, they look at stuff like this. They're going to attack Tyler Hero from now on. Um, anyways, top plays. I thought I had some pretty good ones in here today. Uh, before we get to some film, I'm going to go over some guys, man. Uh, I've been saying some really good things. Chris Paul, nasty. Yeet, Hezzy, jumper, had a big man looking crazy. Nasty is set up. That back and forth is just a setup. You don't see him tacking too much off that between the legs. Done in that way. He didn't even look at the defender when he did that. Anyway, he still got a hand up. Still got a hand up, but that was a nice move. Get this boxing one crap out of here. Mm. So, so my thing on Luca, that's tough. My thing on Luca, and I've I've been you know a huge Luca fan. So before y'all try to attack me, just know you can go watch videos of me talking about Luca and how much I liked him. But um, check this out. I need Luca to be able to kill a thirty what year old Paul Chris Paul. I need him to be able to take these games. I don't care if you know you say he ain't got no help and all this stuff. He got Przingis, he got Tim Hardaway, he got some good guys on the squad, some guys that defend. They near had the same squad they had from last year, but, like, I need him to really be able to pull. And, and he should, they should have won this game. They should have won this game. Personally, I think that they should have, but. 
I don't I don't need you know, at no point in the season if I'm Luca I'm young as he is and Chris Paul as old as he is I gotta we gotta take on that assignment we gotta figure out how you know he should never be able to do this for any player at that age uh, but you know what no disrespect to Chris Paul because Chris Paul is just still really good and we're gonna break down why later why he's still able to do stuff like this at uh, his age I just thought this was cool and, and if you guys are watching this game Richardson really was killing on these pick and rolls. He really was. And it was it was kind of like fun to watch. Slow, speed, up and under, a little lot of hang time on that. I thought that was a nasty layup. Thought that was a cold layup, personally. You know, I have to agree. Chris Paul, another play. Camaro Porzingis. Oh, that was, no, that was, oh, yeah, there it is. Let me drag him out. So he does this. So if he goes, a lot, a lot of times, the big has to stay. But he'll run to, right towards you so and force a switch. Now he's backing up to that corner, which he likes to operate. Got Porzingis dancing. Easy step back. Way too slow to be able to guard that. Chris Paul's smart. And the older that he get, the more I started watching him, I started noticing he don't really attack guards too much. He don't really attack his position too much. He just gets a switch and, and goes to work on big man. It's just like, you know. Why do all the extra work when I could just kill these big men and still be considered one of the best point guards in the NBA? I thought this was cold, but remember I tell you guys this. While, you, while some of you guys are, I don't want to say some of you guys, I got a lot of really good people who, who mess with what we do, right? So I know y'all like on the same wavelength a lot of the times that I am. You may disagree sometimes. I don't really care. Um, we're always going to have disagreements, but you know, for the most part, we'll be on the same page. I'll be looking at Instagram and Twitter and, er and, and whatever, YouTube, and everybody's favorite comment is carry, right? Push off, travel. It's the most, some of the most common stuff you see, right? While people are busy commenting and that type of stuff, I'm busy taking notes because I'm using that. If it's working in an NBA game on a college floor in a high school gym and it's working, I'm thinking about using that stuff, especially if I think that I can get away. Like, what? Are you kidding me? So this is one of them. So watch this in fast motion. So it's a reason why he shifted that way that that much, right? It's a back tap. Look at it. So he attacks hard right there. And with that left arm, he pushes him that way. And you can't see that type of stuff. Because think about where his hand is right here. It's on the inside. So this ref, number 85, that's a... Uh, Closer to number 20 right there, right? Or the closest to at the bottom of your screen on the sideline. He can't see that. The guy on the baseline barely can see that. The guy on the other side, there's players in the middle of the court blocking that play. So, like, don't be busy talking about some travel and carry. Why don't you just, like, start learning? <laughs> Why don't you start picking up on a lot of these little moves? And You know, I like, I like how DeMar... Uh, did that move watching a fast motion one more time pick up speed right here the key is to pick up speed so you can get so when you push off you can get a little bit more momentum to get him to go to in that direction where you're not boom and think about it like the defender didn't even like complain to the ref or anything <laughs> he didn't complain <laughs> there's no babies allowed in the NBA another one <sighs> But he didn't push. He didn't push off on that time. He gave him a little back tap. All it is is just a little bit of momentum, though, right? That was cold, right? I like this one. And he float. He like laid it up there, like put a little air on it, so he didn't get the shot block. I thought that was tough. Shot the air ball. Oh, buddy, that was garbage. This is another one. Body up. And I, and I only put that because, yeah, obviously you don't want to extend the arm. And sometimes you get away with this and sometimes you don't. That arm got away from his body. But I, I keep telling you guys, no babies allowed. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just none. Like, you want to complain about this stuff? You're not cut out for this. This is a super physical league and a lot of people don't really see it. They think, well, you know what's funny? We take we talk about there's no hand checking. We're just hand checking all the time. But even still, have you looked at what goes on in the low post? It's way more than hand checking, way more. 
Um, so you gotta get, you gotta be able to have the body and you know the physicality to be able to deal with this type of stuff. And I was, I thought that was a great move to pick up speed, body them up right there to clear space for the left side so they can lay it in. So the the key is if he doesn't, if you body, and he doesn't continue right on that, then you then you keep going. If he stays on your left side, if you body and he goes in front of you. Then you go Euro, you take the little slow step Euro and finish on the left side. So just little things like that, that'll help you. I'm just, you know, throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Thought this was cold. So remember, I say this almost every film session, the easiest time to score the basketball in a half court set. It, the easiest time to score the ball in a half court set is when the defender is closing out at you, like you see here. It is so hard. I mean, it's a terrible closeout, but even still, it'll have been hard for Ingram to close out on that without fouling. The whole play was nasty, like the ball fake, and he spun the heck out of this. You can't really see it, but he spun that. And I like, you know, y'all, y'all watch my Instagram. You know, I'm all about those little. Those little wall crawlers. Now that was that was one right there. He didn't throw that. He spun the heck out of that. That was cold. Nasty spin. Uh, ball fake. Cold move. And slowly but surely, slowly but surely, he's starting to be one of my favorite players to watch in the NBA. You know why? You know why? It's because he's starting to get that jumper going. And it's something that's been pretty impressive to watch. You know who else is starting to get their jumper going? John Wall from long range. But this is cold, though. <laughs> this is cold. The spin move right off of the screen, right off of the hedge. Didn't touch him. Could, look how close his knee, Zion's knee was to his uh, quad. That's a Charlie horse waiting to happen, but having good footwork prevents that type of stuff. Ball fake. Get out of here, Lonzo. Thank you. Where you going, little boy? Might be going to Golden State. Ingram got to go get that, though. Ingram got to go get that. He was watching the whole play. Go get that. <sighs> Cold move. Got a few more plays. I thought that were pretty nice, personally. This was nasty. If he would have dunked that, I would have lost my mind. If he would have dunked this, I would have lost my mind. How do I feel about RJ Bear, Young Lito, thanks for asking, because I actually like the progression. I talked to Drew Handel a lot because he was working with him. And I've just been kind of keeping track of RJ's progression. And, you know, the thing with RJ Bear, he's just more like a physical player and a scorer throughout his whole career. I don't want to say he hasn't been taught certain things, but he didn't do certain things, especially when he got in first league, first when he first got in the league. And then the thing about it, he started getting better. Like he started getting better at making making plays and shooting the ball. But my mo the most important thing that I've seen him get better at is shooting the basketball. And he's actually been playing better these last few games. So. Uh, you know, I think it's like eight or nine games. He's been averaging a, a decent amount of points. So, you know, it's been fun watching him get better. Uh, and I think that he could be a player for a long time. Sometimes the best bloomers are late bloomers, you know, and he's kind of blooming. I wouldn't even say late. It's just that he's doing certain things better now. Um, so, you know, they got some good stuff brewing down there. You know, another guy down there that's been balling is Julius Randle. Julius Randle's been balling. RJ Bear is looking a lot better. Emmanuel quickly. They got like some guys that are pretty good. How do I feel about Chris? Chris like super explosive. Um, can knock down shots. Kind of like that. Has some Kimba like shiftiness in him. Wish he was taller. Yes, he's bouncy. Wish I could do a film session on him, but I can't uh, because it's college. So you know, the, you guys saw what happened last time I did college. Just got on, but wanted to know, can you break down and speak all small guards and their key to making making it IT, Nate Robinson, CP3, JJ Burrell? Well, today I'll break down uh, CP3 and why he's able to survive right now, even at a shorter height, which he's not that tall. And then on top of that, he, even at in his old age, older age, right? Him and LeBron are like their testimonies. So this is pretty sick. I thought this was a nasty move. 
fake. Like he didn't even use the screen. I thought when I originally watched this live, I thought he like split the screen. He split his, the guy guard. He just shifted him. Uh, went down the lane, tossed it through, th tossed it through right there. So like all the little details, because Josh Hart, he stopped short right there. He reached in, but the little double tap that I always tell you guys about. Oops, I always do this. My fault, my fault, my fault. All right, there we go. Back to it. So he tacks hard, push the ball between the legs, all the little things, right? When Josh Hart steps up and tries to steal that, tries to steal that right there, tosses it through, a little double tap, goes in, tries to... I thought he was going to bang out. He could have probably banged out. One of the fastest players in the league, but it's nice, and I'm starting to be more hyped about... I'm starting to be more hyped about him because his skill is building. So these are the type guys, when you see guys skill building, you know that they're probably here to stay and they're going to be good for a long time. So, um, you know, and it's, and, it's, and it's fun to watch and see him develop. Here's another guy, John Wall. How long is he lasting? You know, he's come through a few injuries, but he's still fast, though. He's still pretty fast. Uh, but the thing with him, he's shooting the long ball. This is cold. Rip through, snatch back. Step back. Ugh. Here's what I really like about this move, though. Is he had a little extra, like, he... From right here, he jetted forward even more to go here for that snatch. And then step back. So, I thought that that was pretty cool. I'm watching the slow. Thoughts on Jordan Walker. Uh, are we talking about... There's a few Jordan Walkers. Are we talking about the, the Jelly Fam Jordan Walker? I want to say he's from Jersey. Is that the Jordan Walker you're talking about, Tony C? Appreciate you sending the money, though. Hmm. Trying to figure out which Jordan Walker you're talking about. Because if you're talking about that Jordan Walker, I just need him. Oh, cold. This is cold. Um, spin move, step back. Seen a lot. We've seen this move before. I just thought it was nice and wanted to, you know, run it by you guys. Mm. Tough move. But the, the spin move is what, oh, I'm sorry, the rip through is what sold it, I believe. The rip through is what sold it. Jordan Walker is a very good basketball player. Obviously a little bit undersized around my height, but um, tough as nails. If he continues to build on this jumper, he's going to be good for a long time. Love his handle. Love his ability to get to the basket. You guys should definitely check him out. What sells this move right here is the, the rip through. So the rip through and him actually putting his body there makes Eric Gordon open up. So now he's able to spin out of that and step back out of that and get a nice balance for the most part, a nice balanced jumper. Who are your top five shooting guards? I don't even know anymore. Paul George? Um, wait, I mean, do we call Kyrie or James Harden shooting guards? Or Kyrie a shooting guard? And to me, Kyrie's a shooting guard. I don't know. Who else? Devin Booker? Who else? I got to I gotta think about that. I got to think about that. All right, so let me know what you guys think is the top play from the day. Chris Paul double. Uh, pull up. We got the another Chris Paul move. Little hanging step back right here. What's that? <laughs> look, look, I'm looking over there. What's that over there? Oh, step back. Then we got a little up and under by Josh Richardson. Chris Paul ISO and the heck out of uh, Porzingis. He got a lot of a lot of top plays today, actually. Crossover, get out of here. Step back, see ya. Jumper. Then we got Demar Derozan back tap. You're over. All right, windmill over. Windmill over the top. Another one throwing it up there, leaving it up there. I wasn't really a top player. I was just showing you guys something. Me personally. Me personally, I like I'm a I'm gonna go with this one right here. I'm gonna go with this. Oh, oh. I'm gonna go with that one. That was cold to me. Oh, what else has been happening too? 
We got a lot of stuff that, I, man, I'm, this NBA season has been great. Another thing that was happening was uh, Clay Thompson. He ain't even on the court. Clay Thompson and Gl- Big Baby Glenn, they, you know, they had a little controversy. Uh, Magruder, Magruber or Magruder and uh, Draymond or whoever else is getting into it. And then off the court, uh, they got in. Uh, they got into it. Was talking into in the film session or the interview, and then Clay Thompson kind of, you know, him and Big Baby Glenn Davis had a little back and forth, talking. About, I can't wait to see you on the court next year, knowing that he's in the big three. <laughs> yeah. There's been a lot of fun stuff, bro. Like the bronze stuff. We we talked about a lot in the beginning of the uh, the video, but anyways, we're gonna move on. Let's go over this Chris Paul footage and just see just why uh, he is the player that he still is. And that's uh, one of the best point guards to ever play this game, ever, ever, ever. And uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm sticking to that. Oh, you know what? You know what? You know what? I wanna, I wanna go over uh, before we do that. I wanna go over this squad. You know why? Because they've been playing. In my opinion, they've been playing good basketball. I wanna point this out. I wanna point all this out. So. Not only is John Wall, but you know they got some some movement on their squad, but they've been kind of like looking good together. C Wood is really good. Wood is good. John Wall is good. I didn't think that it was gonna fit, but honestly, like Oladipo, John Wall, and C Wood are kind of like a good little. They're kind of like a good little three because they don't get in each other's way. Oladipo isn't necessarily like a guy that, you know, high volume type guy or he doesn't dribble a lot. John Wall is, you know, he, he kind of controls things. That's just his type of game, but he's been shooting the three a lot better. C. Wood just kind of does whatever you need him to do, but he's kind of been looking good from just a whatever type stand. He's been ISOing people. That's John Wall with another three. It's a low release, but he's been knocking it down. He's trying to get more comfortable. And, you know, I know he hears the talk. I know he knows where the game is going nowadays. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins, personally, I think that this is the best at his form and his jumper. Like, he's getting a little bit more legs on the shot. Another windmill layup. I think that it's the best, personally, that he's looked in terms of him shooting the ball. Obviously, he's not the same DeMarcus Cousins. Give me that chicken strips. Chicken strip. But they've been pretty good. Like, look how long this dude is, bro. He's mobile. He can shoot the ball. And, and it's something like low key. Low key. If they win, if they are one more, they're one game out the playoffs or something. Like if they win on their next game, they might be in the A spot. It's kind of weird because Memphis has missed a lot of games. Like where certain teams have played 19 games, they've only played like, what, 14 or something? You know, so we'll see how that pans out. Another, th- oh, I thought he's taking another one. Look at him. He moves well. This is quick, and he banged that, too. <laughs> Horford's a good defender. So I kind of like what's going on down there in Houston. I didn't think that I would like this, either. I didn't think that I would like their squad, but they're playing pretty good. You know, they're playing together. They're sharing the ball. They got guys that are knocking down shots, and, you know, they, they kind of look good. Not even going front. She was, he, he's a big pickup, and he can knock down his shot. And the, and the thing about John Wall, he looks to find you. He's looking to play make. And, you you know, I think that players are going to like playing with, uh, you know, I think they do like playing with John Wall. I think Oladipo is going to like playing with John Wall. And Oladipo is actually, he seems like, for me, in my opinion, he seems like a pretty good teammate, personally. Seems like a pretty good teammate. But look at look at what's going on. Like they're knocking down they're knocking down threes. I I still don't know how good this team could be. But you think about some of these guys in their pro. Oh no, babies are I keep telling y'all, bro. Body up. Do your nighttime push ups. Be able to handle this bump. Be able to handle that. Some of these dudes are super strong. If you guys are watching and you always enjoy the streams and, you know, you learn a little bit of something, give me a thumbs up. Look to your thumbs up or look at your screen, find the thumbs up button and just click it for me. Please, please. We need to grow. And if you're watching for the first time or you've been watching and not been subscribed, 
uh, subscribe. Subscribe to the In the Lab uh, YouTube page. We do our film sessions every day. Oh, quick, uh, something real quick. I got a funeral to go to, so not going to be streaming tomorrow. However, uh, if there's a really good game, I might stream later on tonight or later on that night, tomorrow night. So just like a little heads up. <sighs> Dang, that was nice. Okay, that might have been my second favorite play from the night. But pay attention to, you know, Cousins' form in some of these shots. Like, he's actually shooting the ball pretty well. And this is somebody that I haven't – this is a team that I haven't went over, and I promised that I would, especially when they started playing better. And I only did – I'm only doing this right now because they're playing better. They're over 500, and they're playing good. But, boy, can I cannot wait till they play Houston. I mean, I, I can't wait till they play the Brooklyn Nets. I can't wait for it. You know it's going to be fun to watch. I don't know how he hit that mess. You know, I, I want to see John Wall guard harder. That's what I want to see. And then the perfect thing about it is they haven't figured it out in, in Brooklyn. I think they're six and three since the trade. I could be wrong about that. Am I wrong about that? Six and three. Top five most underrated team. Uh, Vujicic. Oh, Vucevic. Wood. Joe Johnson. Drew Holiday. Old school Rod, Rod Strickland. David, I, I, I like that, but let, let's do this. Let's do this instead. Let's do top five underrated players in the NBA right now. Everybody give me your top five underrated NBA players in the league right now. Let's see what you guys come up with. I'll read some of the comments. I can only see the stuff that's highlighted like Dave. Uh, you know, this whole thing is in green. I can see those a lot better when I'm looking at this screen. So They're up 20. And, and what's up with... Uh, this dude is crazy long, bro. Look at... Crazy long. I can't wait to see them play against Brooklyn, man. That's going to be that's gonna be a fun... That's going to be a fun game. You know who, in my opinion, who's over... Or not overrated, underrated? And, he, and everybody thinks that he's good, too, still. But I don't think people know how good Jalen Brown is. CJ's a good one. Zach Levine's a really good one. Vucevic is a really good one. Jalen, uh, Drew Holiday is okay. I, I think he's, mm, I don't know. I wish he could shoot better right now. I wouldn't say he's over or underrated. He can, we know he can defend. Schroeder, Schroeder is super good, you guys. Like, he's so fast, but. I think we kind of get a good idea. Once you play for L.A., people get a pretty good idea how good you are. Brogdon is a very, very, very good good one. Brogdon is really – the president, he's good. John Wall with another three, bro. Can anybody do me a favor and look up how many threes that, that John Wall took this game? Because it looks like he shot it well. Like, the shots are splashing. They got good art. Shot it well. Derek Fisher, Derek Fisher, not in the NBA, not in the NBA right now. John Collins, Sabonis is what Sabonis is on my top five list of underrated players. And what's up with Shea? I think I asked about that. Has Shea been playing good? I, I, I haven't really seen. I, I, OKC hasn't been winning, but I was ready to see Shea take the next. You know, it's, it seems so long ago that he was on the uh, the uh, what you call it, the Clippers. Got traded as a, I think it was a rookie, right? Tell me, y'all got some pretty good, some pretty good list on here. Is Rozier underrated? It's two people asked that. Mikael Bridges is a good one. Hmm. I got some y'all bringing some heat to the table today. Go ahead, and give this video a thumbs up if you're watching, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We need uh, you know, all the love and support that we can get. Your activity, stream health, stream settings. Can I switch that? Oh, it's normal latency. That's why it's so far behind. All right, so anyways, you guys kind of get the point with uh with this Houston Rockets team. They've been playing a good basketball and uh give credit where credit is due. They've been playing well and you know it's, it's good to see. And let's see how they let's keep an eye on them, see how, how well they play. All right, Chris Paul. Let's go over to a little baby Chris Paul breakdown. And do I have some 
I got some shoes to give away. I just don't know where they are right now. Might give them away later on another, on Thursday. Okay. All right, let's get to Chris Paul. Why he's still the type of player that he is. We got fouls. We got free throws. Where are my results at? Wait, no way he did all this off of no free. Okay, there we go. Fouls, free throws. I'm not including assist on this one, even though I know that's a big part of his game. But to put this very, very, very simple, Chris Paul is really good because he go he attacks spots, right? He go he knows exactly where he can score at, and he goes to those spots very, very often. And those a lot of those are the activation points, right? The elbows, the baselines, um, you know, the baseline jumpers. And he attacks those off of screens, too. So when he gets to a certain spot, he knows whether the pass, shoot, dribble, or, I mean, attack the basket, all that type of He knows what to do in a lot of different situations. Now, sometimes I believe that some of it is detrimental to the team. But one thing that I will say about Chris Paul is anytime you bring him to the squad, you're going to win. You're going to win. Uh, the, so, like, these spots right here. Get into that elbow. Now he's going to drag you out. Now he's at that short corner. He gets to these spots. So he'll go from this spot. This is where he shoots it all the time. He shoots it here all the time, those fadeaways. And we are better and smarter. You know, obviously he lost a lot of speed, and it kind of helps to have that when you're shooting. Ooh. Elbow. So just remember this. You're taking notes. A big reason why Chris Paul is so good is because he knows the spots that he wants to shoot. He attacks those spots. He goes up the line to those spots. And I'll explain all that in this uh, film breakdown. So, like, here, one, two, boom. It's a reason why he goes right back to those same spots all the time. Now, sometimes it's different. You know, I'm not going to say he does, he shoots at those same spots all the time, but... You know, just like there, he kind of got into that spot. But you see a lot of there. Oh, right around the elbow, same thing. Throw the ball, one, two, three. He gets a lot of steps out of those dribbles. One, two, three, four. Because, see, when you're letting the ball hang for this long, this is very important to understand. When you're letting the ball hang right here, one, two, three, four, now you're... You have to, all right, let me just switch screen so I can explain this a little bit better. So if the ball is in my hand and I'm still running, obviously the, the ball isn't disc or the dribble isn't discontinued. So now instead of keep dribbling, I can throw the pass or I can rise into the shot or I can hesitate. it, but the ball is in my hand, right? If I'm still dribbling, I take away from the time that I can do that. If that make it makes any sense to you guys. So now as he's coming off those screens, he's letting the ball ride, and he's reading the situation. Am I going to bounce pass? Am I going to pull up? Am I going to throw a behind-the-back pass? And if the ball is on the ground, see, sometimes these things happen in a split second. So if the ball is on the ground or in midair, I can't make those passes. I can't pull up into that shot. You know, so hopefully, you know, that makes sense into, uh, you know, why he's, you know, he, he does exactly that. So, and, and just so you understand, you could take as many steps. Oh, wait, I lost, I lost the internet connection. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it's working on my end. I don't know what's going on over here. But anyways, let's move on. I actually want to show you even more of that, him doing that often, you know, then throwing a pass or maybe going into the shot or attacking. And, you know, he just – he doesn't do too many things, honestly. He really doesn't. Dallas gave this game away. There it is again, going to the same – around that elbow area, lane lines, right? He shoots threes on lane lines too. But that's another one. Pay attention. How many steps he gets out of one, two, three, four. And his pad shot is that fadeaway. Going to the right. You don't see it too. I mean, you see it going to the left. But going to the right. That's his shot right there. But he's attacking spots. So what I mean by that, instead of going to the basket, he runs exactly right here. 
And now the, the defender has a run out to him. It's almost like a closeout. All right, this is his little move right here. So a lot of people try to give LeBron credit for this, but it's actually him. I would say 100% he got this move from Chris Paul. So he's just going to look <laughs> and then step back. Oh, but what LeBron does, he like, all right, so this is, see how Chris Paul is looking at the ball? LeBron does that right here. It's funny to me when he does it too. It's like, you guys know he's about to like step back, right? <laughs> it's all fun. I don't know why people do this. Like, what are you looking at? <laughs> I don't understand why people started doing that. Cash money. Get out of here. If you guys are learning anything, if you have learned anything from this film session, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. And we're going to show what happened at the end of this game. If you're a Dallas fan, that should have pissed you off. If you're a Heat fan, you should be pissed off. Like, they're giving away games. This is a sorry, just sorry defense. I don't know what that is. I don't know if I step up. It's not like he has a quick like release or anything. Like this is one of the best point guards in the NBA or ever. And nobody and nobody like stops him. Nobody thinks to like step in front of Chris, Chris, CP3. No wonder they losing. Go to. Uh, in my opinion, though, bro, like, I don't think that there's an excuse for Dallas losing some of these games that I've seen them lose. Like, <laughs> you can't just turn around and just not acknowledge, like, the defense like that. Like, you never turn. All right, look, right here. And I see people do this. Appreciate the uh, the donation, Lazy. I see people do it. You can't turn your back. Your back to the whole, all the people on the court. You can't do that. You want to have your back normally facing the refs or the sidelines or the baselines or the half-court lines, right? So you can always see what's going on because the dime opportunity may open up. Little did he know right here, number two, uh, let's see. If he wouldn't have turned his back, look at Josh Richardson going down the middle of the court and Devin Booker trailing him. And Mikael Bridges couldn't help because he went with uh he went with his man over there. So this is a dime right there. But he turned his whole back on the play. Oh, thank you. Chris Paul, too crafty. Baby Luca. That wasn't even a foul on Luca in my oh. Uh, nah, he initiated that, but but Luca swiped down, so. Just a crafty vet knows how to get to the free throw line. A lot of good players, they still get they get to the free throw line a lot. Just pay attention to our best players in the league. They get to the free throw line. Hey, Dev, did you ever hear uh, that Kevin Garnett was close to being on that We Believe Warriors team before he went to Boston? I never heard of that. That would, that would have been pretty interesting because it would have been a team full of dogs. And it kind of makes sense, too. You know, Steven Jackson, Baron Davis, Kevin Durant. Kevin Garnett and Kevin Garnett and Baron Davis played together before in, in uh min no, no 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 I had that wrong I had that wrong I'm thinking of Stephon Marbury and uh Kevin Garnett but that that would have been some some pretty fun basketball too that would have been some pretty fun basketball what, what happened right here tough the lane lines bro he oh, he operates from there the whole the whole game, the elbows, which it, which is on the lane lines, just getting to that spot, get to his spots, bro. You won't see him shoot, shooting at certain spots too much. There it is again, fadeaway, patting and fadeaway. Well, he's crossing the lane right there. He's normally looking to go to the spot. And if Luca wasn't there, if Luca wasn't there, he would have he would have drove to that elbow. He would have dragged him out to that elbow. But being that he has that fadeaway, see, like, one motion shooter, you can't shoot this shot. It's too hard for to shoot, like, a one motion shot in front of Porzingis. And look how close this was to getting blocked. It's a tough shot. But that's a that's what's important to have, like, those type of shots, right? You know, um, 
Who is the best perimeter defender in the league? I have to put Kawhi up there. You know what's funny? I put uh, Wiggins is like top 10 or 15 right now. He could really guard. Will LeBron wants to, he can guard. Kevin Durant can low-key guard when he wants to. Uh, you got to put guys like Avery Bradley and Marcus Smart up there. Drew Holiday for sure up there. Clay when he played, uh, was way up there. Who else? I know it's a lot of guys that I'm missing out on. Like There's some dudes that, that score that could really guard that you would kind of be surprised about. <laughs> I had to double. He was cooking this game, too. I love watching, like, you know, some of my favorite players growing up, like Chris Paul, kind of do what he's doing right now. Ooh. So as we talked about dragging the big out and then kind of going to work from there. <sighs> Always ends up around the same spot. Don't get too far away. OG and Anobi is a good defender too. Physical. A lot of people were fooled when he got cooked by LeBron. I went, he was a rookie though. Best pure point since 2000. CP3, Nash, Kid. Pure point? What's a pure point anymore, though? I guess I give it I give it to Nash or CP3, but I, I, I think I like CP3 better than Nash. All right, here we go again. Letting the ball ride. Y'all throw, dribble one more time. One, two, three, four. Four steps in between one dribble. Rising up, Porzingis got to step up and get a hand up on that because that's his money. This is why he's still good because he has all these shots that he wants to, that he knows that he can hit, that he works on before the game. They're the same shots over. Go watch them. Go watch. He takes exact these exact same shots over and over and over before warm up. What was it ninety minutes to get on the clock? Forty five minutes over at the time they get on the clock and. You know, he has a strict schedule. Get into his spots. Boom, get into his spots. I think that was, uh, I think I'm going back over old footage now. Right? Am I? That should have been in the first quarter. Yeah, that was it. So, anyways, definitely had to go over that game with you. Now, one thing that I did not see, um, I wanted to, you know what I wanted to do? Let's look at, a player specifically because I want you to keep your I want to keep a watch out for him and everybody you know likes him anyways but De'Aaron Fox because he's rapidly getting better and I want to show you like how confidently he's shooting the ball from the three and it looks good to me like really good to me I'm gonna go makes twos threes but he's looking better though. And and what the heck is going on with uh New Orleans? Anybody been watching those games? Like, what's going on? Like, they just have not been looking good at all to me. It's kind of it's kind of unfortunate. They have all that talent and they haven't really been capitalizing on, you know, the talent that they have. Just solid at making plays. Uh, Darren Fox getting a lot better at making these reads. He's young. And, you know, I had the argument and I had the conversation of who I would take over De'Aaron Fox and or John Morant. And I think at this point, I think I go with... Uh, I think I'll go with De'Aaron Fox now. But I want to know what you guys think. You know, maybe I'm crazy for thinking that. Cause I like John Moran too. Dang, I like Ja too, but I think I'll go with De'Aaron Fox, bro. I don't know. Ja's good too. No, nah, I'm gonna go with De'Aaron. They kind of remind, uh, not they don't remind me. They just like they're both good and they're young and obviously one's a lot older. But I just think that, you know, another person, too, uh, that's been improving on a jumper, and I think that has potential to be a shooter, is John Morant. John Morant does not have bad form. 
And he actually shoots a pretty solid percentage. But it's not the percentages that I look at. It's the shots that he's shooting or not shooting. And that's what I look at mostly when I, you know, I'm looking at different players and, you know, how they're playing. Like, is he taking shots to make people pay? Or is he just taking shots because he has to take them? Or is he just comfortable, absolutely comfortable taking that shot? Romel, appreciate the love. Appreciate the love. Sent $9.99 through. That's, that's love. Fox is a winner. Ja wins more. Fox is overrated. Ja is overrated? Why is that? Why are they both overrated? I think they're both pretty good. And are they even that far apart in age? Like, I don't think that they are. I just think that they're both up and coming young players, and I'm going to look forward to every matchup that they have. It's a lot of uh, good rising stars that I think are going to be really good. And, and De'Aaron Fox is good, bro. I remember seeing him in high school. And hey, look at him. I remember seeing him in high school. And because uh, I remember Marcus Levesque cut his hair too. And they just looked like just the same person that was left handed. They both had mixtapes around the same time. Then I remember they both had the uh, the fro, the nappy fro. And they just reminded me of each other. Marcus Levesque had a little bit more of a handle, but, you know, I mean, barely though, in my opinion. And then on top of that, do you take that type of style of player over Trey Young? Something else I was thinking about uh, last night. And I'm showing I'm showing uh, De'Aaron Fox right now because I just want to see his progression through the years. And I want you guys to start paying attention to it. Not just the good, but the bad too. Like, what can he improve on? I just think that he, he's improved on his jumper. Like, he's, he's shooting un- when people go under the screen now. And he's getting to his pull-ups and... You know, he's knocking down shots and uh, leading them to, to victory. Like, yeah, he had a 40-point game, like plus 40-point game. And I thought that was, uh, you know, really cool to see the progression of this dude. And if the draft were to be done over, who would you take? Him or Lonzo? Really think about that. But I still think that Lonzo hasn't been the right fit. But I think that a player like De'Aaron Fox, whose game is more loud, can fit on more teams because – what he does, how he plays, but doesn't necessarily mean he's always going to be most effective. Lonzo may end up in a perfect spot for him. It's an argument that I make with, with Draymond Green a lot. Like, Draymond Green goes to the wrong team, he might be out the league. But he goes to Golden State where he's weaponized. And, and so, this is why I was, I was talking this on the other stream. Some of you guys are, I want to explain this very, very clearly. And I tried to do it on Twitter, but I needed more characters. That's tough. Some of you guys go to teams, and it's either it's either the beginning or the end of your career. And what I mean by that is sometimes you have to do the research. You have to do the research on the team that you're going to. Because if it doesn't fit your play style, you're going to end up screwing yourself because they do some, they're going to ask you to do something in an offense that you've never really done before, right? So, like, just imagine if Draymond went to a team where all they're doing is dribbling the air out the basketball, and then they swing it over to Draymond last second. Or, they, or you know what, Draymond, let's, let's try to get you in the post and see how you operate out the post. Like, score for us. Like, that's not Draymond's game, you know? And so, for you want, you want to go to a team that will weaponize your skill set and they're not going to just like you. They're going to love you. You know, they don't kind of just want you. They want you to be there. You know, they're going to try to honestly give you a fair shot. You know, if you're good enough, they'll start you. But if you're not good enough and, and they they're, have honest intention to bring you, bring you off the bench and letting you develop, go there. But sometimes you guys are just going to schools because you like them, but it's not about that. What type of offense do they run? Does that fit around your skill set? Are you the type of player that likes distributing? Or well, then go to a, a team that, that that rocks with ball movement. So it could either be the end or the beginning of a testimony, you know, or the end of a of a career going to the wrong team. And a guy like Draymond, you know, the Golden State Warriors were a perfect fit. And one could argue if David Lee never got hurt, what would what would have become of of Dre? Who knows? One could argue, what if he went higher up in the draft and didn't end up with Golden State? Now, you could argue that he would fit better on a team like like 
Portland, right? That has Dame and CJ, but even still, their ball movement isn't isn't prioritized like it is on a team like Golden State. So these are just, you know, I'm, I'm using I'm using Draymond, but there's many more players. There's so many European players that would have fit really well in the system and ended up going to a team, especially like in the early 2000s, ended up going to a team that was ISO heavy and they would have ended up on the Spurs. Who knows what would have happened? So, um, you know, just just quick thought right there. Always go to where they 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 really gonna mess with you and weaponize your skill set if you have one. If you have if you have a really strong skill set, which you should always be trying to build, then you know if you got to go to a team that'll help you out with that. Right. Oh, boomerang! There's a boomerang. Was that on purpose? <laughs> he got tripped up, but like, did he stay there for a little bit? <laughs> Did he know he was going to be that open? <laughs> it was kind of cold, though. Just at the end of the day. Hopefully that, uh, you know, you got, I don't mind people saying that's a little bit of exaggeration with Draymond maybe out the league. I don't really care. I mean, personally, that's what I saw because you know, I hear a lot of coaches, assistant coaches in particular, talk about Draymond. And they said they're saying the exact same thing. It's like, oh, he couldn't play on any other team. But I hear people saying that in the NBA. It's not just me, you know. And, and, and the thing about it, some some people may take it offensively, but like I think that Draymond is a winner. So him not being good on a certain team is more of a knock on that team's IQ because his IQ is so high. And then defensively, he's a monster. But sometimes those things go. You know, unappreciated when, you know, you got a guy who can't contribute on the opposite end. His shot looks good, guys. It's good arc on that. Solid arc. It's dropping in the basket. Could be slightly a little bit more arc. It's good legs on it. It's good balance on it. Like, I just think it's a good looking shot right now. I think he's, I think he's a really good player. And here's the thing, too. Here's the thing, too. I always laugh at this. The Warriors, or Draymond is always garbage until it's time to fight against the Warriors and say they have four All-Stars. But then if you talk to him about, like, oh, can Draymond raise, can he can he make this team good? What would he average on this other team? Then everybody tears Draymond apart. But then when it's time to talk about anyways, some of y'all not even ready for that um, conversation. That was that was flat. It creeped in the basket, but it was a tough move. Though. Mm. This kid has a lot of potential, man. And he's crazy fast. Look how he's blowing by people, but he's not even that close to top speed. All right. I'm going to uh I'm going to wrap this stream up. I'm going to wrap this stream up, but, you know, just before you guys head out, if you want to keep supporting in the lab, go cop some more gear on interlab.tv. This is one of the hoodies that, you know, I've been rocking lately on streams. I got a, we ordered a bunch of them. We got a bunch of them just sitting out here. Uh, cop some, cop some gear, bro. We're, 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 we're really trying to grow. Uh, we got our shorts. Let me see. I can show you these guys. Show you these babies right here. So these are the uh, ice cold shorts. Uh, kind of like the Utah Jazz colors. Kind of see how they are. So you guys can grab some on interlab.tv in March. Got a lot of stuff. Uh, we got socks. Our black in the lab socks are coming, and. Uh, in March. No, actually, I, I actually don't know. Maybe February or whatever. But before you guys head out, just show some love with uh, 
with a thumbs up and a subscribe and then turn on your notifications so you can be updated uh, when everything comes out. And shout out to everybody that bought our Crouch and Tiger Hidden Dragon shorts. That's love. Um, you know, and we're, we're, it really helped us out. It helped, it helped us do some really cool things. So uh, anyways, man, just just can, let's continue to get better through these film sessions and just learning about the game. And thank you guys for support in the lab. And I'll catch you guys on the next stream. On your way out, drop that uh, thumbs up.